Hello, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be working on my E21 a little bit more. You may have seen my previous two videos documenting buying the car, getting it running, and doing some upgrades to it, mostly just replacing worn out parts. But today I think will be a very interesting video. It'll be a little bit more technical on the stuff we're doing. And it's something I've been dreading doing, but AKG sent me a big pile of parts to test fit on the E21 platform. We have subframe bushings, trailing arm bushings, they are reinforced uh, transmission mount, alternator bushings, and a couple other things. And we'll be installing those on the car, and we'll also be documenting the process of doing it because not all of these are marketed as fitting the E21 but I believe they should fit, so I shot them an email and asked them if they'd send them along to me for me to try them out. So um, it'll be a little weird because suspension and all that on the front is completely stock, 30 some years old, worn out. Um, and this will mainly stiffen up the rear of the car and we're not doing engine mounts today, but uh, I think it'll be an improvement and it may just encourage me to address the rest of the vehicle sooner rather than later. Um, before we get into this, we'll talk about at least one thing that I've done to this car and since the last video, and that is replace these door cards. So the factory door cards for this car were cloth because it came with cloth seats. And I wanted to um, make the seats match. So I pulled these seats out of a early model car that had the tan vinyl and I wanted the door cards to match. The only problem is, is these don't have a hole for the power mirror switch, but most E21s, at least now, don't have working power mirrors. Um, the early model cars came with a chrome mirror that attached further back on the door and they weren't power, so I'm not too worried about that. And I think that's the only update, so we'll start working on this. All right, so we got the old one out and you can see there's still some leftover color transfer from where that previous one was. I don't know if the green was factory on that mount, but here's the new AKG bushing. So it's uh, still a rubber bushing, but I don't believe it's oil filled and it has a aluminum cap on it to keep it stable. So we should just be able to slide this in and then let it fall down through that hole. And then, okay, so I did most of this off camera because um, it's kind of impossible to, to get the camera in here and also unbolt everything. But uh, the secret I found is obviously support the transmission, but then uh, go ahead and undo these two 13s that hold this cross member on and then um, try to loosen that top nut and then undo the bottom 
and then you should just be able to slide the mount out. This is obviously the new one. So the secret for this is you can't really get to that top nut. It may look like it, but you can't get the uh, 18 millimeter wrench on there. So um, pull it off, tighten down that nut on top until you can just barely slide it between uh, or onto the, the little ear on the transmission and then push that all the way on and then put this cross member on and then tighten everything because you may be able to get, you know, half a turn if you're lucky on that nut up there. So if you push it in already tight, then you should be good to go. Um, I will have to come back and check this. I'm not sure if it's fully seated in there. I'm not sure if it's pushed as far back as it should be, um, but I think it should hold for now. So I'll move on to some other stuff. European model trailing arms, I believe off of a 323i. So in the United States, we only ever got the 320i, which was the four cylinder M10, and they came with drum brakes on the rear. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this swap, um, but really the easiest way to swap disc brakes onto the rear is to just swap trailing arms from uh, 323. So um, I picked up the E30 rear trailing arm removal tool and I will be trying that out on these just to make sure that these rear trailing arm bushings fit uh, because um, they're listed as they're listed as um, 1602 2002 E30 E36 318Ti which has E30 rear suspension Z3M, which is the same thing uh, in the rear. And um, in theory, it should fit in a, uh, E21 because these all share similar rear suspension geometry. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these bushings installed and then uh, I can confirm fitment of these to uh, EKG. So it looks like a big bolt with a nut and then a washer, and then an end cap on it. And then to me, what I'm assuming happens is you thread it through, assuming this way. Now that doesn't seem to. Thread it this way. To me, it makes sense that we want to push the bushing this way, perhaps into this cup. That's enough, uh, but we'll see if we need to do a little bit more trimming as we push it through. When you're going to remove bushing, you're going to take off one of these end caps. So we'll end up with um, we'll end up with us putting the bolt through it with a washer, and then put the uh, tube on plus this end cap. And then a washer and a nut. And it's easier to do the bolt head on the side that you're drawing through. That way, if you did it the other way, then um, if you're trying to put a socket on it as it goes down through, this uh, bolt stud will stick out further and you won't be able to get it all the way on. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be two nineteen. It's going to be and two nineteens, one on either side. And uh, I found that putting the socket on the bolt end is easier. And then you can put the wrench on this side. And what I actually end up doing is take a piece of tape and put it on. Yeah, 
Uh, so what I do with the uh, wrench side is I take the wrench, put it on, and then I tape the wrench on here. It doesn't need to be tight, it just needs to be enough to hold it on. That way you can focus all of your energy on cranking this down. And you, you can see it's pushing this down in there now. And hopefully you can see why it's so important to trim this is it's not going to be able to slide down through here unless you do. And the more you trim it down, the easier it's going to be to push this down through. And with anything like this, I don't recommend using impact tools. You'll just end up breaking the tool you're using. Bushings and things like this, they're not just going to pop out. So slow and steady pressure applying some kind of impact to it doesn't really help. But you can see that if you trimmed it appropriately, I didn't apply any heat or any kind of penetrant to this. It just, you know, with moderate hand pressure, it's just coming right out. If you find that the socket continues to slip off of the bolt, it's probably because the, the rubber of the bushing is, is uh, bending back and being squeezed in here and it's pushing your socket off the bolt. So that's why it's important that you trim that rubber back as best as you can. I cannot express to you how easy this is right now. This is butter, butter smooth. And you just keep turning it until the tool just falls right through. So you'll know. There you go. So you can see here that I have cleaned this uh, this uh, tube here out on the trailing arm, got the rust and corrosion out. You don't necessarily want to ream it out or uh, remove anything off of the inside except for just dirt and corrosion. Make sure it's round. And then um, very liberally apply the grease to the inside of the bushing make sure to not get this surface uh, greasy or anything like that like I'm doing by rubbing my hands on it but you can see I put the tool around it put the big end towards the outside of the trailing arm and this won't require much cranking so I won't even bother um, trying to tape this wrench on you can see just super light hand pressure starts to pull it in. You shouldn't have to crank down on it. If you're having to put a lot of pressure on it, then uh, perhaps the inside of this is not as clean as it should be. If something's not aligned and you need to double check your part number to sure you got the right thing. And remember, there's no need to lubricate the outside of this bushing. With Poly bushings, the name of the game is letting that sleeve rotate if it needs to. But the bushing itself should never rotate in whatever the bore is that the bushing sits in. Otherwise, it starts to wear the, the bushing and then you get slop in it. So it does get a little bit tighter when you're trying to draw the two into each other, but as you can see, I'm still not putting a lot of pressure on it. And then as we get closer to the end, most of the struggle is just trying to keep this uh, ratchet on here. I think it's a little bit easier. Just turn the wrench. Don't need to crank down on it. Just make sure that it seats. There you go. One installed bushing. And back the tool out. So 
So we have our AKG poly trailing arm bushings and the 323 I arms. So the next thing that we're going to do is start on the removal of the subframe. So you have to start with undoing the parking brake cables. These should be free now. So um, we'll have to undo the top nuts for this strut here. We'll have to undo that brake line, I believe, we will need to undo the exhaust right here. Just drop that muffler off. There should be two bolts on either side for the uh, subframe going up into the body. Uh, we'll have to undo that upper diff mount. We'll have to undo the drive shaft from the differential and uh, maybe a couple fasteners here and there. Then uh, we'll lower the entire subframe out, take the uh, trailing arms off, swap those with the 323 ones, and then do subframe bushings and diff bushing while it's out. Um, I should replace this exhaust hanger because it rattles. So we'll see, uh, but that's fairly easy to get to, so. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get started by getting this muffler off. There's this handy little hole right here. I'm sorry for double nutting or double wrenching, but I do need to do so. I got that one. 
Yes. That's two. All right, so now we have the exhaust off and drive shaft disconnected. I think I'm going to disconnect the struts, which I should be replacing, but I don't have any replacements right now. And then disconnect the brake lines, then the top diff mount, pull the parking brake cables out, and then I think we'll try to drop the subframe.